Hello and welcome to this quick video to answer a question from a Patreon of mine, Patreon called Eddie, and he asked me, can I explain blade tracking? Now this is all related to the kind of videos I used to make a very long time ago, back from about 2010 and before actually, where I was doing videos uh, on helicopters. In fact, they were my first how-to videos on YouTube. Sounds like Eddie's coming into the part of the hobby where he's playing with radio control helicopters and blade tracking is something that's talked about a lot. So I thought it'd be useful to explain, Eddie, what blade tracking is. So blade tracking is something that pilots that use fixed props, like on this quadcopter, for example, don't tend to worry about much. But it can be an issue if you have two separate blades whose pitch or angle is independently set. On something like this prop on this quadcopter, it's all kind of built in from the factory. And so long as you haven't built bent one of the blades out of position then as it turns it's going to all move in the same plane so most of the time that we're using these fixed blades in the small side of the hobby this isn't something we tend to worry about heck most of the pilots i know don't even worry about balancing although blade balancing as you get into larger and larger blades particularly with things like helicopters are an important part of making sure that the model isn't being shaken apart by its own rotor. So what is blade tracking? Well, blade tracking is the ability of one blade to follow the other in the same plane of rotation. So when you view it from the side, they appear to be in one plane or appear as one blade. So if you imagine you were flying the helicopter at head height and you're looking along the blade discs that's created as the blades turn if you look at the ends you want both blades to appear as one piece so rather than appear as two blades at the end they appear as one so they're actually rotating in exactly the same plane now this can be a little bit tricky to do depending on the way the head is set up now how does it happen well, for fixed props like the ones we've talked about and looked at on things like quadcopters, it's usually going to be a result of something like damage. So, for example, you've landed badly and you've probably bent one on blades in the propeller out of alignment. And that's usually pretty obvious and you can tend to see lots of vibration in the model. Most of us will just swap that prop out and stick it in the bin. However, you can get this on something like a folding prop if it's on the back of something like a flying wing where you have them folding up. I use them a lot. Maybe one of the blades has a little bit more angle or can move a little bit further forward as the hub and the restrictor on the hub is letting one blade ride a little bit further forward than the other one. It's really on helis where you find this most talked about and where it gets a lot more complicated. Because there's two types of helicopter and radio control that you're going to bump into. And we're using pretty broad brush strokes here, just trying to keep the video relatively short. But in modern helis without fly bars, like this one here, this is the Ishin E160. This is a little kind of palm stop, uh, top style radio control helicopter. This essentially has a flight controller in it that does what a fly bar would do. The blades are all set up by the swash plate. So as I move the blade, you can actually see there's a link going down to the swash plate below, and it's the swash plate that's moved by the servos. So the servos are moved by the flight controller, or the fly barless unit in here, and that then translates into the pitch of the blades as they move around. Very, very clever system. But all the links are set. There's nothing adjustable in here. And in larger models, there is adjustability. But in this small one, everything is set up. So as long as all the pieces in the head are not loose or worn, the blades should ride in the same plane. However, in helicopters that use a fly bar, it is a lot more complicated. This is my very old but beloved T-Rex uh, 500. This is one that I absolutely love. It's a 6S heli from back in the day, and I didn't convert it to fly barless. But this has a fly bar, which is which the piece is at the top. And the way it actually works is that what you're doing is you actually fly the fly bar, the paddles at the end of the piece that you're actually moving with a swash plate. And they're the pieces that then set the pitch on the actual blades themselves. Seems incredibly complicated, but it produces a little bit more stability and you don't need a fly barless controller. You just have a little gyro on the back that manages the tail. 
On these models, the flight controller is you, the pilot. Now, this is a lot trickier to get the blades running in the same plane because there are a fantastic number of things in here that not only can get worn or loose, but the blade grips, the things like the fly bar and the paddles, how they're all set up, the linkages, having a loose screw anywhere in the head, anything at all that's wrong in this head will cause the blades to not track correctly. So why is it important? Well, in my experience, it's mainly vibration in the model. A little bit, you know, one or two millimeters out from each other is probably all right for just regular flying. But having blades that aren't tracking correctly, that vibration will play havoc with the bearings on your motors, your mounts. And if you have something like a flight controller inside of something like a helicopter, it'll mess up your flight controller gyro readings as well, because all that vibration will be red. A prop that is tracking correctly will be smooth and just better for everything. So how do you get two blades to track correctly? Well, this is something that, believe it or not, full-size aircraft have to worry about, and they use things like weights and adjustments. And making sure that the blades are balanced is a good place to start, even on a smaller radio-controlled heli. The way that I test this stuff is once I have uh, built a head back up or replaced the blades is I will hover the helicopter at head height, look along the blade disc and look at the end of the blades to see whether or not I can just see one blade or it appears as one blade or whether I can see both of them. If I can see both of them, then what I'll do is I'll land, I'll put a little bit of black tape on the end of one of the blades and hover it again. The reason for the tape is that it allows me to identify which blade is riding high or low, and then I can adjust one of the blades to take care of it. The big trick with this is whenever you are adjusting any of the blades to try and get them tracking true, that you only ever adjust one, otherwise you end up chasing your tail. So I would typically use the one without the tape as the master and only adjust all the linkages and the settings in the head for the piece that has the piece of tape on and then keep flying it until the blades appear to be both flying in the same plane when viewed from the side. How you adjust that is very much part of the particular model that you have and if it is adjustable it'll be detailed in the manual. So again, with a tight uh, head in something like a helicopter with no worn parts, you might not ever see this, but if you replace the blades on a heli uh, and see that both are not running true, then it's time to tweak something to make that the case because everything will fly better if you do. So hopefully, Eddie, if you uh, followed along with that, that kind of makes sense and explains what blade tracking is and why you need to do it. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.